Hey everyone, we're gonna see how to parse CSV, so comma separated value files using the Go programming language. Um, so if you've been keeping up, I, I wrote a tutorial previously and recorded it about parsing XML data and then even converting it into JSON. This time around, we're gonna uh, do pretty much the same thing, but with, with comma separated values. So this is a common need for a lot of people when it comes to reporting or even processing scripts, things like that. Um, so we will be starting off with a fresh project. I'm going to be using, uh, my editor is Goland. Uh, feel free to use whatever you want, but uh, for Goland, we're going to go ahead and create a new project. Um, I'm going to call this project CSV project, and I'm going to say create. With the project created, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and create a new uh, project file to code in. Um, so I'm going to say create a new Go file, and I'm going to say this file is going to be a simple application. The name of this particular file, I'm going to call it main.go. You can call it whatever you want, uh, but for this example, main.go is fine, and click OK. And that'll create a package uh, main file with a main function. All right, so everything that we need to do to actually parse CSV data is actually built into Go. We don't need to download any kind of external libraries or anything like that. What we will need to do is we will need to create a CSV file for the basis of this, for this demo. Um, just go ahead and create a new file. I'm going to call it um, data.csv. And this is going to be just uh, for this particular case, we're just going to call it a text file. So that, that data.csv file is going to reside uh, side by side with the Go file. With, um, for your example, go ahead and, and, and just remember where you saved it and it's fine. Um, open up that CSV file before we actually start coding any Go data. Um, go stuff we're actually going to just define what our csv contains um, and it's just basically going to contain people information so uh, first name last name address information things like that so for example uh, first column of that csv file might be a first name next column might be a last name so ramoy uh, the next uh, line after that or the next column let's go ahead and say that that's a city so let's go ahead and say let's go ahead and say san francisco this time and the state would make sense, so California. So we're gonna have, what is this, four different uh, columns for the CSV file. We're gonna add one more, I'm just gonna say Maria, Raboy. We're also gonna say San Francisco. And we're gonna say um, that's in California as well. Well, you know what, let's just change it up. Instead of San Francisco, let's go ahead and say uh, Sacramento. And we're gonna say save. So just two, two lines is fine for this example. It'll prove our point, but uh, go ahead and manipulate it however you want beyond that. So we'll go back to the main.go file. Uh, what we want to do is, now that we know what our file contains, let's go ahead and create a data structure around that. And you'll notice that in Goland, as I type things out, it's going to create uh, imports for me. If your editor doesn't do that, just make sure you include the correct imports uh, for the Go packages that are included with Go, but just make sure they exist. So let's go ahead and say type person, and this is going to be a struct. And inside of this struct, uh, we're, we're going to have the following. So we're going to have a first name. We're going to call that string. If we really wanted to, we could add JSON annotation. So we're going to say JSON. We're going to say first name. You can call the annotations whatever you want. Last name is going to be a string. It's also going to have an annotation. That's going to be last name. It will have an address, but let's go ahead and create that address struct first. So we're gonna say type address struct, and we're gonna say that it contains a city, which is a string. The JSON annotation uh, is gonna be city, and the state is also gonna be a string, and we'll call it the same thing, state for the JSON annotation. So now that we have uh, the address available, we can go ahead and add that to person, so every person will have address addresses, so we're going to say address, and this is going to be a address, and it's not going to be a slice or anything, so it's just going to be one person has one address, nothing more. Uh, so we'll keep it simple for this example. We're going to say JSON, we're going to say address, and we're going to save what we have so far. All right, so now that we have the data structures that we're going to load our CSV data into, uh, we need to open up that file and we need to begin the parsing uh, status. So we're gonna say CSV file. Uh, we're not gonna throw any kind of errors if it doesn't exist, um, but if, if you wanted to catch the error, and you probably should, uh, just go ahead and change that uh, underscore to an actual variable, and then, we'll, then you would print it out if it's not null or something like that. 
We're going to say os.open. So we're going to open up the CSV file. And we're going to say people, uh, it's not people, it's data.csv. The next line, um, after we've opened our file, is we want to create a new CSV reader. So we're going to say reader. And we're going to say csv.newreader. And we're going to provide it the CSV file. All right, so reader is not currently used. That's why it's underlined. Um, what we want to do is we want to create a new slice of person. So that way we can load any number of, of person into a array type format. So we're going to say var. We're going to say people, plural. And we're going to say slice of person. Now that we have our slice of person, we can begin actually iterating over this CSV file. So we want to load every line and parse out the columns. So what we can do is we can say for and we can say line, otherwise error. We're going to say reader.read. That's going to read every line, line by line. If there's an error, that probably means that we are at the end of file. So we're going to say if error equals um, io.eof, then break. So we no longer want to loop anymore. Otherwise, uh, what we want to do is we want to say else, um, else if error not equal to nil. So if, if it wasn't an end of file, that means it's probably a real error and it's probably something that we want to throw. So we want to say log.fatal and we want to say error. So just, just to reiterate here, if it's an end of file error, it's not technically an error on our part. It's just saying we're at the end of the file. We no longer need to loop anymore because we're not, this for loop is, is basically an infinite loop here. We're not, we're not uh, specifying a range. So we're just saying loop until the end of the file. Otherwise, let's go ahead and throw an error if it's a different type of error. Now that we have that, we can say people equals append. And we can say people. So we're, we're just appending uh, our uh, items to our, our slice here. And we're going to say person. And we're creating a new person uh, object out of whatever we read from each line. So we're going to say first name is going to be line zero. So the first column in the line, the last name, which is going to be line one, and you can see where I'm going with this, address is actually going to be a new address, and the city, whoops, city is going to be line two, and the state is going to be line three because that's, we only have four columns in this particular CSV. Um, because we're doing multi-line like this, we need, we need trailing commas, otherwise Go is going to complain at us. Um, but now that we have people added, so each line is going to be added to this people slice, what we can actually do is let's go ahead and print it out as JSON. So we're going to say people JSON, call it whatever you want. We're going to ignore the error for this time. And we're going to say json.marshal people. And then we're going to say FMT print line, and we're going to uh, convert that to a string that uh, people JSON byte slice, and we're going to say people JSON. Now I saved it. Now we're going to run it, and I'll reiterate everything, uh, assuming that everything runs correctly. Um, but let's go ahead and say run. Uh, we're going to probably need to create a, a new build configuration. Oh no, we don't. Go build main.go. So we'll run it. Um, and inside of our Go build, assuming that you're using GoLand like I am, um, it output our JSON for us. So first of all, I have uh, first name Nick, last name Raboy, address, it has the correct address information. Uh, and then the next item in this array would be Maria with different address information. So it was able to take that CSV file that we created, so this data.csv. We were able to, to create a data structure around this CSV file. And we were able to load each line. So we were able to uh, read each line of that CSV file um, until the end of the file, taking each column and adding it to a new person struct, um, adding that struct to a slice of person, which we marshaled. Um, so it wasn't terribly difficult. Uh, Go makes it pretty convenient when it comes to being able to read all of these different data formats. Uh, like I mentioned previously, I did do one on XML. Um, so. If you ever have a need to, to, to work with these non-standard, or at least I call them non-standard data types, so something other than JSON, 
um, def definitely have a look um, at, at what Go offers as far as what you can read. I think there's even an, a YAML support as well and probably others as well. So uh, you just saw how to, how to parse CSV data uh, with Golang.